Let's go! Dave Van Horn is the greatest coach in the history of Arkansas athletics. Comment down below if you disagree with this video today and look I understand this is an SEC football only channel but Razorback Nation you guys have shown me the most love and I am getting absolutely perplexed that there are so many Dave Van Horn haters out there because as many of you know if this relatively routine foul ball is caught by the second baseman or the right fielder there guess what Dave Van Horn has the same amount of national championships as the people you're telling me today are the true goats in Arkansas coaching history. So let's take a look a little bit deeper if this claim that I'm making is absolutely true. Boom! Looking at you. Yes, you right now. I know you've already hit the subscribe button and rang the bell. And I want to see if you guys actually watch the videos because we're only focusing on the three major sports. The sports that you guys actually do care about the ones that actually do make money and look um john mcdonald is probably the best coach especially if you're just focusing in on coaching with 40 national championships in track and field which is probably the most unique sport you guys probably know why it is complex and let's be honest nobody truly cares about it the same way that they do baseball, basketball, and football. And when you actually just look at those three sports, there are three GOAT candidates, Nolan Richardson in basketball and, of course, Frank Broyles in football. Now, when it comes to Dave Van Horn, Nolan Richardson, and, of course, Frank Broyles, I want to ask you a question. Which one of the three coaches has the best winning percentage at Arkansas. We'll start from there, and while you come up with your answer, I am just focusing on these men as coaches. Obviously, there is more historical significance with Nolan Richardson and Frank Broyles. Obviously, Nolan Richardson and everything that he went through um, as a black man in Arkansas was very well documented, and obviously the racism that came along with that um, was tough for him to overcome and he obviously did it and had one of the best 10 years of any SEC basketball coach ever and of course Frank Broyles with him being the athletic director after his run as a football coach and all the legends that he coached from uh, Jerry Jones, Barry Switzer, you guys know the whole history there. Um, obviously he is more than a coach, he was also a very successful AD so we are just focusing on them as coaches today. So You've come up with your answer, and bang, as you can see, the win percentages are not that much different. Frank Broyles does lead the way overall with a 70-ish percent win percentage. It is important to note that there were ties mixed in there, so it didn't include those ties, so that obviously would change that total. Nolan Richardson around 70%, and at 66-ish percent, you have Dave Van Horn. And even when you look at conference win percentage, 55% for Dave Van Horn, Nolan Richardson, 63.8%, and then Frank Broyles at 72%. But once again, these ties make it very difficult. But as you can see, Dave Van Horn has coached way more games than the other coaches. He has coached longer than the other coaches. And this is why what I'm about to say is so important the one thing that happened to him that did not happen to the other two is their conferences became not that much harder during their tenures where Dave Van Horn, the SEC, got infinitely better year by year. So Frank Broyles, 1958 is when he started, and he ended in 1976. So when the AP poll was around then, there was only 20 teams that actually made the poll. But still, as you'll see in this column right here, there's not a whole lot of teams in the Southwest Conference that made the final top 20 in the polls. In fact, there just weren't that many teams outside of Texas that would even make the final top 20. Occasionally, you'll see SMU or Baylor or whoever else actually make 
the final top 20. And once again, these comparisons aren't apples to apples, but as you scroll down, you'll see that there never really was just one year where the conference was absolutely loaded. So Nolan Richardson started in 1985. This column right here are the amount of AP final top 25 teams that made uh, the polls. And as you'll see from 85 to around 91, the Southwest Conference barely put teams in the AP Top 25, meaning that Arkansas played in a soft conference. Now, to Nolan's credit, he joined the tougher SEC. And as you can see, um, the amount of teams that made the final Top 25 drastically increased. So for Nolan, the conference became more difficult, and he also made deeper runs in the NCAA tournament. He won his national championship here. But as you'll see, you know, towards the end of his uh, career at Arkansas, the most teams that actually made the AP Top 25 was five. But more often than not, it was around three-ish, four teams that were in the Top 25. Now, but when you actually look at Dave Van Horn, this is where it gets very interesting. So I had to manually go count this. There wasn't any fancy graph for me to look this up really quickly. But these are the amount of SEC teams in the final AP Top 25. And in the far right column was Arkansas's final AP ranking. So as you can see, to start his career uh, at Arkansas, Dave Van Horn, year number two, they reached the College World Series, but I want you to see how much this number in this column begins to increase. So in 2018, as you can see, three teams in the final AP Top 25, but then it goes 7, 8, 5, 7. But as you can see, College World Series appearances starts to highlight uh, your screen as um, if something is underlined, that means it was a College World Series appearance. Look in the far right corner, look at all these AP Top 25 finishes. We then go to 2013. Once again, five, 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 seven, seven teams in the AP Top 25. And remember, the conference became more diverse with the addition of Texas A&M and Missouri. 18th, 8th, and 18th. And then this is where it begins to get really juicy. This final stretch right here. And this is Dave Van Horn in his current state. Okay, outside of the one Rona year, eight, eight, seven, nine, eight. The amount of SEC teams in the final top 25, you get three College World Series appearances. That legendary 2021 season with a final ranking of eight. So you didn't even make the College World Series, the final eight, and they still put you in the top eight. And you also won the SEC tournament that year. And then, of course, 2023 is a year uh, where TCU right now just took care of business. There were eight teams that made the AP Top 25, and you were the third overall national seed. So once again, this number on the right column is the overall ranking. And as you can see, he just got better as the conference got harder. And then when you take a look at the records year by year, if you were to equate, let's say, the College World Series to an Elite Eight, well, Dave Van Horn has seven of those. Nolan had four. Now, um, you know, if you take a look at year by year records, Nolan really only had one really poor season, and that was his first season. He also had two NIT appearances. Um, and then obviously that final season. So honestly, everything in the middle was, for the most part, pretty good but then you you look at what people say about Dave Van Horn the same thing was kind of true about Nolan towards the end of his tenure he had a bunch of early exits in the NCAA tournament now he did have obviously the national championship and a runner-up appearance but overall you count the amount of elite eights he had one right here in 98 uh excuse me in 89 another right here in 90 and then Obviously, you have a championship and a runner-up right there. So he made four Elite Eight appearances. Once again, uh, you know, when you take a look at the final eight in college baseball, it's not, once again, apples to apples. But Dave Van Horn has made it further in his postseason tournament than Nolan has made it in his. So Nolan Richardson, only two losing seasons, his first and his last. Well, Frank Broles had a lot of 500 kind of seasons. Now, once again, he didn't play as many games, so a loss does, you know, affect your final record more than, let's say, another sport. But once again, you got a losing season in 58. You got another one here in 67. Um, 
And then, of course, you had a lot of these 500, 6 and 5, 5, 5 and 1 kind of seasons. So, honestly, year by year, Nolan and Dave Van Horn were better off than a Frank Broles. So then you get to uh, Dave Van Horn. Now, a lot of his SEC final records uh, were around this 500 kind of range. And, of course, you had this one really poor season in 2016. But, honestly, I think most college baseball pundits will tell you 40-win seasons are what they would consider exceptional seasons. And there were a lot of not only 40-win seasons, but 39-win seasons to Dave Van Horn's resume. And once again, you take a look. If you want to just go year by year, he got better as the conferences have gotten better, the SEC in particular. So, honestly, Dave Van Horn, during his tenure, only had one losing season. And, by the way, he is still going. Proud of just the whole season. You know, winning the Western Division, beating out LSU and A&M and some of these guys that have all these players this year. I'm just so proud of our players. Boom! I'm looking at you. Yes, you right now. So, I understand you are so sick and tired, Razor Mag Nation, of hearing Dave Van Horn give the same old story at the end of the year where you're not winning, right? You, you haven't won a national championship yet. And it makes it that much harder that Arkansas hasn't won a national championship in the three major sports since 1994. So I get it. And you're tired of hearing the excuses. But this is a problem. We are so used to living in an end result society and a society that only celebrates rings, especially a sport like college baseball, where there is so much working against you as a coach. You only have 11.7 scholarships to distribute to your full roster. Yes, of course, all the teams in the SEC have gotten infinitely better, as you saw with all the AP Top 25 data that we shared earlier today. And when you actually look at the resumes of Frank Broyles and um, Nolan Richardson side-by-side side to Dave Van Horn, they're not different really at all. You guys saw it with the win percentages. The only thing different, the only thing you remember are the national championships and the fact that that one play versus Oregon State is what separates Dave Van Horn from those other two. It's absolutely ridiculous. And keep in mind that college baseball is the true random sport of the three. You don't see it in basketball or even football. A team like Fresno State winning a title. A team like Stony Brook making a Final Four. Whatever. College baseball has so much randomness in its postseason that basically you just have to get there for you to have the opportunity to win a national championship. And I understand it sucks that almost every other SEC school not named Arkansas has won a national title. Now, I do have a stat here at the end of the video. Boom. This is from uh, one of my buddies, Ty Richardson. Every 30 years, Razor Hack Nation is when you actually get your national championship. So 2024 is going to be your year. You just have to be a little bit more patient. Yeah, I, or you guys just could be cursed. I don't know. Huh? 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 So, uh, yeah, you guys saw we have live streams normally on Wednesday, so make sure you check it out. I know I'm dropping this on Wednesday instead of the live stream. Part of it is because I wanted to talk about this, and I felt like a recorded video would be a little bit, better way to actually you know show show this point but yeah i will also say that it is close i i do think it is close especially between nolan and dvh but uh you know with how difficult college baseball is now remember arkansas was picked to finish third in the west third and they were the national seed um one of the national seeds in the sec the third national seed you just ran into TCU, a team that's a bad matchup for you. So let me know in the comment section below. It is power, our SEC, boom. And who knows? Sam Pittman or Eric Musselman might be the final goat. I don't know. Um, tonight, what are we doing tonight? We're doing lemon pepper chicken wings. Let's go.